Hello, hello, I'm Juliana Hubbard, the plant-based dietitian, and this is the What Would Juliana Do Q&A. In light of the very recent study that was published on the Epic Oxford Group, showing a dramatically increased risk for bone fractures in vegans, I wanted to talk today about foods and nutrition all related to bone health. Now, number one, the most important thing you can do for strong, healthy bones is weight-bearing exercise. So walking, running, push-ups, calisthenics, all the stuff that's stressing your bones is really important to keep that bone mineral density throughout your lifespan. So that's really, really important outside of the kitchen, unless you exercise in the kitchen, which, hey, I've done that too, no judgment here. The other thing that's not really food related directly is vitamin B12. Please, if you are on a plant-based diet or if you're over the age of 50, it is so crucial that you are taking a B12 supplement. So I have all of those guidelines on my website, plantbaseddietitian.com. It's in all of my books and my papers, but it's really important to make sure you are supplementing with vitamin B12. It's so interesting, all of these interactions that the body has in terms of bone health and bone mineral density. So there's all these different synergistic interactions that need to be considered. So besides those B12, which we're not gonna get from our food and exercise, let's talk about what you can do in the kitchen. So this is a recipe I make very often in my house and I'm gonna call it today a strong bone stir fry, but really it's just a stir fry that uses ingredients that are rich in the nutrients that are crucial for healthy bone health. So I'm cooking my sauce over here and that's just gonna be heating up. And one of the ingredients in the sauce is tahini. So tahini is basically a sesame seeds blend up into a paste and sesame seeds and tahini are very high in calcium. So of course you can't talk about bone health without addressing calcium. Also interesting in this sauce is a, uh, an acid component. I have a rice vinegar in there this time. I play with different types of vinegars and vinegar may actually help or acetic acid and acid in general and vitamin C helps in enhance absorption of certain minerals like iron and like calcium as well too. So that's really important to consider. You wanna have your vitamin C and acid rich foods together with your mineral rich foods too so that you can enhance absorption. That's really important because it doesn't matter how much you take in of a certain food and make sure that what matters is how much you actually absorb and a lot of things get in the way of absorption. So that's kind of interesting. So I'm cooking this sauce right here. It also has some red chili paste uh, for some sweetness and some sriracha because I like it spicy. And it doesn't really matter how you like your sauces, you know, just your stir fry sauces. There's so many different delicious ways to do so. But consider adding an acid in there or a, a, you could use fruit like a lemon juice or lime juice. That works a lot too, depending on what flavor palette you're going for. If you're doing more of a Thai dish, lime is really good. And, uh, and then consider adding some tahini so you get a boost of calcium. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with some mushrooms. Now, what's fun about these mushrooms, and most mushrooms, not most mushrooms, but you have to be aware, there are mushrooms that come together with, that are actually um, bathed in UV light to enhance the vitamin D. So vitamin D is very important for bone health and you know we're seeing this worldwide deficiency of vitamin D now whether that's due to there's a lot of different factors limited sun different latitudes smog body fat body skin color how much exposure so many different factors that vary into how much vitamin D we have. So I always recommend that you get your vitamin D tested and know your serum levels and make sure you're at optimal levels. When you have optimum levels, you're gonna be better at absorbing calcium, so very important. So right now I'm using these UVB radiated mushrooms that actually have it on the package that they were radiated, so irradiated, so that they are going to have some vitamin D in there. Now granted, most of the time you're supposed to get your vitamin D from the sun, but if you are low, I do recommend supplementing. A good general level for supplementing with vitamin D is 2000 IU a day. Now, if you're very low, you may wanna do a higher dose for a little bit of time, ask your doctor and always go by the number. I don't like to blindly supplement with vitamin D or recommend supplementing blindly with vitamin D because it's fat soluble and that's really important. It's not like B12 or if you take extra, you're just gonna excrete it. Uh, vitamin D will get stored because it is a fat soluble nutrient. So I'm letting these mushrooms sweat. I covered them with the lid um, so they are going to get nice and sweaty and release a lot of their fluid. There's a lot of water in mushrooms, surprisingly so, just like when it comes to the leafy greens. Like you think you could have this huge pile 
of leafy greens and then it just turns into this tiny little amount when you cook it so it is kind of interesting you have to kind of think about that when you're when you're creating a recipe so vitamin d very important but that's going to be something you need to check in the labs make sure and see what your levels are and then of course calcium so other wonderful sources of calcium that we're going to include today are tofu is a wonderful source of calcium most uh tofu is said in, in calcium and it's a wonderful source for that incredible, incredibly important mineral. Other foods are figs or oranges, uh, again, sesame seeds and tahini. Almonds are good sources of calcium. You want to incorporate these foods every day. We need at least 1,000 milligrams a day, probably more, depending on stage of life. And we want to make sure at, on a plant-based diet that we are getting calcium. And I'm going to go, I'm going to skip ahead a little bit while these mushrooms sweat. Use their smoke is the other nutrients that are really important for bone health. One is vitamin K. So important. So where do we get our vitamin K, the best source of vitamin K? What do you think I'm going to say? That's right. Leafy green vegetables. And so I've got a whole array of leafy greens in here, but also we want to go for the low oxalate leafy greens. So that means stuff like cabbage and broccoli, kale, which is actually exactly what's in here. We've got some bok choy, we've got some kale, and we've got some broccoli. Excellent sources of vitamin K, and then of course the broccoli also is a wonderful source of calcium. So it's like a win-win-win with all these wonderful foods. And so you wanna make sure you're getting those leafy greens. That's why I always say let light leafy greens be thy medicine, my medicine be thy leafy greens. I'm gonna add a little bit of water here just to make sure they don't burn, although we got some caramelization going on in here smells really good, just the mushrooms themselves. Let them sweat for another 30 seconds with that steam. Mm. And that's it. So vitamin K, vitamin D, vitamin B12, uh, and then of course calcium. And exercise is really important too. So those are the different things to consider. And this is just one delicious way of getting them. So after the mushrooms are in here, I'm going to add some heartier vegetables. So these are ones that need to cook a little bit longer than the leafy greens. So I've got some snow peas and some cabbage, some red cabbage or purple cabbage and some carrots. Again, so much nutrition in vegetables. They are the most nutrient rich foods that we have available to us. And so you want to incorporate these all day long, every day. This should be your go-to staple where you get at least half your plate, fruits and vegetables. I actually prioritize vegetables, but they're both really incredibly important. So I'm just gonna heat this up a little bit, soften the vegetables just a little bit, and then I'm gonna add in the greens. So I'm gonna add in my bok choy, the broccoli, and the kale. I chopped this all up into bite-sized pieces. And now I'm gonna cook it for a minute, I'm gonna put the lid back on, and then I'm gonna add the sauce. So again, there's this beautiful synergy between the sauce and the absorption of the minerals that you're gonna find in here. Another wonderful thing you're gonna find in here is all this iron. and. You know, I tried adding molasses to my sauce because molasses is also a good sweetener for minerals, but it just dominated the palate, so I didn't. I took that out. <laughs> but I usually use the sweet, sweet chili, pam, uh, the sweet chili paste, and the a little bit of tamari, and definitely some hot, some heat, and it doesn't really matter. Like whatever sauce you like or whatever flavorings you like, this is a really great way. And then the rice vinegar. So it makes a really nice, easy sauce. And then I added some arrowroot after it cooked. And I added some arrowroot with some cold water that is going to thicken it up because I like the sauce to be thick. That's the difference between really addressing in a sauce. All right, so that's that. I'm going to add in the tofu. So I pre-cooked this tofu. If you don't like tofu um, raw, it's really kind of fun to really get it really harsh and, and dried out and crispy. This is a real crispy one. I've been using my air fryer lately, but you could bake or roast it just the same. And basically I put this in the air fryer about 20 minutes. I flipped it, did another 20 minutes, about 400 degrees. Actually, it was only about 10 minutes and it was getting really, this is really crispy, crispier than I normally do. And I'm going to pour over my sauce. Can you see the sauce? Oh, oops, without me spilling it. So I'm going to pour that over the vegetables and I'm going to cook it up. It smells absolutely delicious in here. And that's it. I'm going to cook this and heat this up for a couple more minutes, but everything was already ready to go and because the tofu was already cooked. And that's it. So I'm going to show you my stir fry. And now you can eat this plain. You can eat it over brown rice or wild rice or quinoa or noodles. My daughter likes it over ramen noodles, so I'll make this over ramen. But that is the recipe. Strong bone stir fry. 
I hope that helps give you some suggestions on how to eat for strong bones and definitely the minerals and vitamins and things to keep in mind. So I'll just review one more time. Vitamin K, vitamin B12, vitamin D, but check your serum levels. Calcium is so important. And the other things, by the way, like uh, magnesium and uh, all these other things that have synergistic effects. So you wanna consider all of those when you're eating a diet. So what does that mean? Stick to the six daily threes, make sure you're getting plenty of leafy greens every single day, get some sunshine and definitely get some exercise. Thank you so much for joining me and for your wonderful questions and comments. Please keep them coming in the comments section below via direct message or my website, plantbaseddietitian.com. I'll see you next time.